If you watched part one of this video on my website, you may have read the accompanying article which explains the brief behind these photos that we're about to do the raw processing on. They were for Louise James, designer of a revolutionary yoga seat called the Butterfly. There's a brief there because these photos are going to be used for marketing purposes. She needed something that was quiet, something that was a very peaceful sort of an image with lots of areas where text or graphics could be added to it by designers, depending on what the use was. So we're going to be developing a photo that was shot directly into the light. Now this isn't about fixing something that went wrong. This is about using your first building block of photography and thinking about the shot you're going to do, but taking it to the next level and thinking it right through to the post-production stage. So therefore we capture in camera the data we need so that we can do the post-production. Now I'm gonna be doing this in Lightroom. Before I begin, I just wanna mention that uh, somebody asked me on the part one video whether I thought that doing post-production work is cheating, whether or not we shouldn't be able to just get a shot right in the camera. Well, here's the thing. Post-production has always happened since the dawn of photography. Early photographers were bleaching away pigment with on pewter plates and glass plates. They were doing it in their prints. If you wanted to change your contrast in an image, you'd use a different contrast grade paper or contrast filters in the enlargement. You'd be correcting converging verticals by tilting the baseboard beneath the enlarger when you hand print it. It is no different. All your images begin life as a raw file and then there's a choice. If you select shoot JPEG, what happens is your raw file has the post-production done on it by the camera or you shoot raw and do it yourself. The problem with doing it with the camera is the camera doesn't know what you want. The camera can only work along pre-programmed guidelines that have been put into it when it was made. So therefore, those are for the average photo. If your photo isn't average, which this isn't, then it's not going to do a good job of it. And I'll make a video about that at a later date. So let's just pop into Lightroom and have a look. So here's the photo that we're going to do a bit of work on. I've chosen this one because it is directly into the sun and there is a huge difference between the developed RAW file and the original. I've made a virtual copy of it, so I still have, this is the original and, uh, sorry, that's the virtual copy, but they're the same settings. What I'm gonna do is remove all the settings from this so that we can go to work on it. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just put back my camera profiles because they would have been done on import and I don't want to lose those. Step one is going to be to have a look at the histogram. Now, this matches up with what we saw when we shot the picture. If you remember, I wanted to burn out some of these highlights because this is an area where we can add text, but we know we've got detail in the shadows. These deep shadow areas have got some detail there, which we know we can fix within Lightroom. So let's begin. First of all, let's just take those highlights down quite a lot. I think we're gonna to have to take them all the way. Next, I wanna bring up the shadows. Now, if I could get away with taking them all the way, look at the detail we got there. But if I can ease it back a bit, I'm going to, and try and use other methods, because the more we increase shadow exposure, the more noise we're likely to bring into the shot. You can see I shot it at ISO 100, so it's a nice, low ISO, nice low ISO to try and minimize that. Next, let's just check our whites and blacks. I'm just gonna alt click onto the white slider. Now, shock horror, I'm actually adding those highlights. I'm letting them burn out more than they already are, and I may come back and fiddle with them later blacks. Let's just bring those down in. Let's get a bit of detail, a bit of contrast down here in the rocks. That's looking pretty good, I'd have thought. Right, the next thing I want to do is to white balance the shot. And to do it, I'm just going to pimp up my exposure because I'm not going to white balance from the white jumper because I don't know what color of white that jumper is. I'm going to take it from the butterfly because I do know that this little band running through here is a neutral gray. So let's just pick up my dropper and I'm gonna put it about there and white balance to there. I don't know if you saw that in the video, but a load of yellow just went into the shot. That is already making the butterfly stand out more. Let's reset the exposure. The next step is going to be to do something with the sky. I'm gonna use a brush. So let's pick up a brush. I've got a nice big brush with a nice soft edge on there already. I don't want any effects. Let's just make sure they're all switched off. Use a mask, because I want to see where I'm painting, where I'm brushing onto the shot. I'm just going to run this across here and 
mask out the sky. Now why am I doing this with a brush and not a grad filter? Well if I went down to here with a grad filter, look, let's have a quick swipe across there. A grad's got a straight line and it'll go across Louise. I don't want it to do that. Let's just undo that brush stroke. I want to go round her. Now this is going to create a little bit of a halo and you could do this a lot more carefully than I am now but I don't want to spend ages on this just for the video but also I think you'll see that there is a benefit to that halo in a minute and there are further steps we're going to take which will kind of work with it so let's just run that over there good we've got a pretty good mask around Louise like that. I want to just remove some of it from down here because it's going over the rocks, I don't really want it on the rocks, so you just press your Alt key to get a negative brush and I can just remove that from down there. Good stuff. Let's just switch off that and have a little look. What are we going to do with our sky? I'm going to push in some dehaze. Be a little bit careful with dehaze, but let's just bring that in because it will bring in more detail into the sky. As you can see, look, that's a pretty big difference. Take that to about there. I don't want to go any further than that for the minute. But as you can see, it's also brought in yellow because the light from the sun is yellow orange and it's made a very, very sort of ugly stain across the picture. So we'll worry about that in a minute. I'm just going to take the exposure down just a touch. I want to get a little bit more detail into there. That's not bad. Now, developing images is a painterly thing, so we do it a step at a time. Let's do something with that yellow cast. Let's take our white balance and just see if we can take a bit of yellow out of there so it mixes back in a bit nicer. That's a bit better, isn't it? So the sky's okay. We've now got a little bit of a halo going on around Louise, but we're going to come back to that in a minute. I may have over darkened the sky, but the great thing about non-destructive editing is you can always come back to it and fix things later if you overdo it. This is a painterly thing. Do it a step at a time. There isn't a right amount. You don't just say it's 32 of this and 54 of that and put those settings in. You've got to use your creativity. You've got to work with this. You're the chef. You're the one who's behind your pictures. Don't let your camera do it for you because it's not a chef. It can't think. Okie doke. Next, what are we going to do? I want to do something in here because Louise is looking a little bit dark and so is the butterfly and that is the most important part of our picture. I'm going to use a radial filter. I'm going to use quite a large radial filter. Let's just click and drag that in. I'm going to let it come right off the bottom somewhere around there I reckon. Uh, that's looking pretty good. It's going to need a little bit more exposure. Let's just ease that up. Look, now look what's happened to that yellow highlight round her. Look, you see, it's kind of disappeared a bit. It's still there, but it's disappeared a bit. Now it has a kind of a handprint look. You think back to the days of when you used to have handprints done, if you're old enough to remember that, you'd get these little halos. It's quite a nice look. I think it's quite a creative look. Okay, so that has lifted that up. I find just adding a little hint of contrast to about the same place as the slider above just helps with some of it as well. Good, that's lifted that area. Next, I'm going to use another radial. I'm going to put it here on the butterfly. Let's just zoom in, so make sure I've got it in the right place. Let's just ease in a radial filter down here. Tilt it up so it's at about the right angle. Just make it fit, just drag it around till you're somewhere close. That's pretty good. Okay, I want to give it a little bit more life, so I'm just going to ease up my exposure on the butterfly. Look, I've only gone 0.3 of a stop, but it has just lifted it. Look at this, look, from there to there. That's all it needs, be subtle. Next, I want to add in a little bit more yellow here. Let's selectively add a bit more yellow because this thing is yellow and the important thing about it is it's the star of the show. It's the colorful bit in the picture. I'm also just going to increase the saturation overall in this area. That's not bad about there. Okay, zoom out. Let's have a quick before and after. <laughs> We've made a world of difference already, haven't we? And we haven't quite finished yet. There's a couple more little jobs that I just want to check out and do. If you look around the edges of Louise's sleeves here in her jumper, you can see it looks a bit shady. That's where we had overlap from our brush, from the feather. I just want to take that off because I don't like this sort of slight darkness around the edges of her jumper. So we quickly pop into our brush, bring on the mask so we can see where which areas have been, oops, I've done that completely wrong because I'm being a numpty. 
zoom out, activate the brush, bring on our mask and zoom in. Now look, you can see there's red overlapping onto Louise where the feather was. So I want to take that out. I'm going to use the Alt key and negative brush and I'm just going to start taking this out because I don't want that effect actually on her. I'm going to speed this bit up because you don't need to watch me. This is, this is a little bit of detail work. Detail work makes all the difference. You don't need to sit here and watch me do this one step at a time. See you in a minute when I've done it. And that's about it there, I think. A little bit left in the middle there. Just make sure that's all gone. And I think we're good. Great, that is much better. Now if I turn off the mask, I think you can see that those black edges around her jumper are massively more diminished. So we've pretty much got our shot going on there. I think I am just going to give it an eensy little bit more vibrance just to help the colours a bit and I'm going to give it a little bit more saturation overall. I think we've got quite a nice looking image there. I'm not going to put any clarity in it, into it at all. So we've pretty much got it. There's one last thing up here. I've got a dirty dust spot and we don't like those do we? So let's just quickly take that out using the spot removal tool. Nobody wants a dust spot especially not on a commercial image. So there we go. Let's have a quick look at the before and after. Now, as I said earlier in the video, this isn't about fixing something that went wrong. This is about fulfilling the vision that you have at the time of shooting. Um, to learn more about these sorts of things, have a look at my um, Seven Steps to Perfect Pictures Lightroom course. It's currently being produced, but you can leave me your name and your email address. And I'll let you know the minute it's ready, I'm gonna go into this kind of stuff and way, way more too. But this kind of shooting is what I call the eighth building block of photography. And that is something which is gonna be coming maybe next year, the total pre-visualization of your images. Let's have a quick look at it on full screen. There we go.